Welcome to the SCA. This introduction to the SCA is brought to you by the Barony of Luxelier, a local branch of the Society for Creative Anachronism, more commonly called the SCA. I'm Brian, the Hospitaller of Luxelier, and I'm going to discuss what the SCA is, how it got started, and what we do within our society. A quick note, while this is a general overview of the SCA, things may be presented from a local perspective. Some slight differences may exist from how things are done in your local area. So let's get started. What is the SCA? So what is the SCA? We are the world's largest historical recreation society. We strive to research and recreate the better parts of the Middle Ages and Renaissance, within Europe and beyond. We focus on the pageantry, combat, feasting, and revelry of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, while avoiding the negative sides like pestilence, persecution, and plague. If they did it back then, we do it today, and you can as well. The SCA started simply enough as a college party. A group of students at the University of California, Berkeley, decided to host a medieval-themed party on May 1st, 1966. Since that time, the SCA has grown exponentially. It encompasses 20 kingdoms across the world, has about 30,000 members worldwide, and has been going on for now over 50 years. And you'll come to find out that a lot of the structure, including awards and ranks and even our officer structure, were all kind of afterthoughts that brought about to deal with how much the society grew over the years. When people first hear about the SCA, they may be confused about the name. Society for Creative Anachronism doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue. Well, the name was actually created by just one member who was reserving a space at a park for one of the early events for what became the SCA. Uh, she needed to put down a name for the reservation, and she just thought of Society for Creative Anachronism. Anachronism being something out of time or place. So they were a society, a group of people, uh, creating something from a different time. That name stuck, and quite frankly, it's been confusing people ever since it first showed up. So how does it work? There are two sides to the SCA. On the one hand, you have the corporate side, and on the other, the game side. For the corporate side, we're a 501c3 not-for-profit corporation, which promotes the education and recreation of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. This is where we have to deal with things like insurance and taxes and the financial side of things. On the game side, we're an historical organization recreating the better parts of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. This is where we actually get to participate in things recreating the Middle Ages. There's a little bit of an overlap, but understand that the corporate side is just what we have to do to deal with having a large organization in the modern era. When you first hear Medieval and Renaissance recreation organization, you're probably not thinking about a corporation. But that's what we have to have. In order to deal with certain modern laws and things like insurance, we do need to be incorporated. We are incorporated in the state of California, and our governing documents require us to have certain officers and a board of directors. So our president is the person who administers the modern corporate aspects of the SCA. They're the spokesperson, they handle contracts, they deal with insurance and attorneys, and all those types of things that uh, you have to deal with as a modern corporation. We also have a treasurer who administers the finances of our society, and we have a secretary who ensures our day-to-day -day operations. Uh, they handle insurance requests and membership issues, and they're kind of the only person you'll deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with the corporation. We also have a board of directors. They are nine members of the society, and they're appointed to serve staggered three-year terms. So that means that you don't have a complete turnover every three years. Three people will drop off one year and get replaced, and then the next year a different three people will drop off and get replaced. So the Board of Directors votes on policies for the society, changes to our governing documents, things like our, our laws, our uh, marshal's handbooks, our heraldry. Those things are all overviewed by the Board of Directors before they can be put into place. And one great thing about our Board of Directors is usually before there's a big change, uh, that is put out to the membership for commentary. The only time that may not happen is when it's a specific change for legal purposes. Moving on to the game side of the SCA, this is where the magic happens. 
the corporate side really tends not to interact with most people's enjoyment or participation in the SCA at large. And that's because it's the local groups and the local kingdoms that put on most of the events and the activities that people can participate in. And that's really where most people have their majority of interaction with the society. So we have a ton of different activities that we can participate in within the SCA. So whatever strikes your fancy, you can join in and do it to your heart's content. One of the most visible activities within the SCA is armored combat. This is combat fought with heavy leather or metal armor, and it uses sword simulators made out of rattan. This is non-choreographed, full speed, mostly full power, but not quite combat that simulates the historical combat scene in the Middle Ages with a few safety precautions, just so we can all go to work on Monday. The other main type of combat you'll see in the SCA is called rapier combat. Sometimes it's called unarmored combat to distinguish between the heavier armor used for armored or chivalric combat. These fighters use relatively minimal armor and non-sharpened steel swords to simulate historical fencing. One area gaining popularity in the SCA is missile weapons. These are projectiles used both in and out of combat. So we have target archery, combat archery, where you take the field and shoot at other fighters. We have thrown weapons, that's typically knife, axe, and spear. And even siege engines that are used in battles. The SCA also has equestrian activities. These are things done from horseback that include games and skills challenges, even mounted combat and mounted archery, and, of course, jousting. One of the broadest fields in the SCA is the arts and sciences. This encompasses things like sewing and weaving, painting, calligraphy, singing and storytelling, research, dance, bladesmithing, blacksmithing, historical combat, anything and everything that they did historically, we can research it and recreate it today. We also have several people who are looking at how people in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance thought of science and created different instruments and machines. It's really an amazing field and it can encompass pretty much anything your mind could think of. One of the most common themes you'll find throughout the SCA is service. There are several opportunities to serve within the society. We have a variety of officer positions. You can help marshal combat. You can sit gate and welcome people into events. You can entourage for royalty or nobility. You can even offer fighter support and help run events. In this picture, we see a group of officers renewing their promise to serve the kingdom within their offices. Service really does permeate through every aspect of the SCA, and everyone is expected to help at least a little bit. So where can you find the SCA? Pretty much everywhere throughout the world. While most of our membership is in the United States, we do have several groups in Canada, Europe, and Australia and New Zealand, as well as some groups in Africa and Asia. Across the world, 20 kingdoms make up what we call the SCA Known World. And each one of those kingdoms is led by a crown and a group of officers. And every kingdom consists of several subgroups. Those subgroups are your local groups where most of your contact with the SCA and your activities are going to take place. And if there's not a local group exactly in your area, there may be one nearby, or you can even try to start your own group within your area. This is a map of the known world. Most of our groups are throughout the United States and Canada, and states or country borders don't necessarily dictate exactly where a group may be. We are located in the Kingdom of Ansteora, which is right in the middle of this map down at the bottom. It's the gold shield with the black star over Texas and Oklahoma. Looking at the Kingdom of Ansteora, we encompass the state of Texas, except for that portion in the mountain time zone, and the entire state of Oklahoma. We started as a principality, that's a subgroup, of the Kingdom of Aitenveld, which is now modern-day Arizona, and we became a kingdom in our own right in 1979. Ansteor contains roughly 30 local branches, divided among three administrative regions. 
So the state of Oklahoma, plus a little bit of the northern parts of Texas, are in the northern region. The northern part of Texas, mostly centered around the DFW Metroplex, and then all the way out to the Panhandle over by Lubbock, that is the central region, and South Texas is the southern region. Our local group is the Baronet Naval Sawyer, which is located in the southern region of Onsteora. We cover Galveston, Brazoria, and Matagorda counties, along with part of Fort Bend County, as well as the Clear Lake and surrounding area within Harris County. Translated from Gaelic, our name means Clear Lake. I've mentioned kingdoms and principalities and local groups. What does all of that mean? Well, a kingdom consists of 400 members or more and is led by a crown. Every other branch is subordinate to a kingdom. They are actually within the kingdom. A principality is a subgroup of a kingdom that has at least 100 members and they're led by the coronet. Not every group has a principality, so keep that in mind. Every group is within a kingdom, not every group is within a principality. Now those are more regional type groups. They consist of several local groups within them. The local groups specifically are a barony, which consists of at least 35 members and are led by nobility, usually appointed by the crown after consultation with the local group. A province is a group of at least 35 members, but unlike the barony, they are not led by nobility. And a shire consists of at least 12 members. So that's typically a smaller group. All three of these branches answer directly to the kingdom. They are not a subgroup of another group. They answer directly to their kingdom. The next groups are subgroups of other groups. A canton consists of at least eight members and is subordinate to a barony. A stronghold consists of at least five members, and these are specifically around military bases. Those are subordinate to either a barony or a province. And a college consists of at least five members and is assigned to an educational institution, and those are also subordinate to a barony or a province. So these three groups are actually underneath another local group within the kingdom. So I just mentioned crown, coronet, and nobility. What does all that mean? Well, the crown is a royal pair that leads a kingdom. They are selected every six months through an armored combat tournament. A fighter must be fighting for a consort, so it always has to be a pair. And you serve as the coronet, the prince and princess, of the kingdom before you become crown. The coronet is a royal pair that leads a principality. Just like the crown, they are selected every six months through an armored combat tournament, and just like the crown, the fighter must have a consort, so it's always a pair. Now it does get a little confusing here because heirs to the crown are also called the coronet, so coronet does have a double meaning. You can be a coronet to the crown, which means you are about to become the crown, or the coronet of a principality, meaning you rule the principality directly. We also have nobility. Nobility are ceremonial leaders of a barony. They are appointed by the crown after consultation with the populace of the local group. Now this can be one or two people serving. It really depends on the situation and who the crown wants to appoint. It is important to remember that in all of these branch leaders, gender is not important. At least within Onsteora, you can be a royal pair for crown or coronet as male and female, two females, two males. And same thing with nobility. It can be two men serving, it can be two women serving, a man and a woman, or a single man or a single woman serving in those roles. So these roles are really open for anybody as long as you are able to put forth the time and effort to serve in these roles. Service is absolutely vital to the functioning and success of the SCA. One of the most common ways to serve is by holding an office. We have offices that cover a variety of fields within our SCA. 
First is the Seneschal. They are the lead administrator and the legal representative of the group. You can kind of think of them as the branch president. The Exchequer is the treasurer. They ensure the finances are in order for whatever group they serve. The Marshal enforces safety rules for martial activities, such as armored combat and rapier combat, all the missile weapons, and equestrian activities. So you can have a Marshal in each of those different fields. The Herald is the one who takes care of the registration of historical names and armory, like your coat of arms. We also have a Minister of Arts and Sciences who encourages ANS activities. So if you're interested in a different type of art or science, this would be your contact for getting more information about that field. The Hospitaller is the newcomer liaison and someone who coordinates demonstrations of the SCA. And I'm the Hospitaller. This is what I'm doing as part of being a newcomer liaison. So you can really think outside the box and do different things to try to educate people and bring people in to the SCA. The Chronicler creates and publishes the newsletter for either their local group or their kingdom. The Web Minister is someone who takes care of programming the website and doing updates. In Onsteora, we've done a great job of switching over to WordPress, so you don't actually have to know programming in order to be a web minister. Several groups will also have a minister of children. This is a person who oversees children's activities. They actually set up specific activities for kids to keep them occupied and give them something to do during the day and hopefully take home something really fun so they can remember the event. In Onsteora, we have officers at the local level and the regional level. Every kingdom will have kingdom level officers and all of those officers answer to their society level counterparts. So our local officers will report to their regional officer. The regional officer is usually an administrator and they will compile the local reports and give that to the kingdom officer. As I mentioned we have about 30 branches so that's a lot for one person to handle. So our Areas are broken up into three different regions, and the regional officers kind of act as a liaison between the local groups and the kingdom officer. The kingdom officer will then report to the crown and to their society counterpart. And then the, so those society officers will report to the board of directors on how well the SCA is functioning. That was a brief introduction to the Society for Creative Anachronism, or SCA. For more information, you can visit us online at sca.org, find us on Facebook at Society for Creative Anachronism, all spelled out, and check us out on Instagram at SCA Social. If you're in Texas or Oklahoma, you can find us online at onsteora.org, on Facebook at Onsteora SCA, and on Instagram at SCA Kingdom of Onsteora. If you're local to the lock, check out our website at onsteora.org slash lock dash solière and we're on Facebook at Barony of Lock Solière. Links are in the description down below. I'm Brian, the Hospitaller of Lock Solière. Thanks for joining me for this introduction to the SCA presented by the Barony of Lock Solière, and I hope to see you soon.